All right. We are live. We got Justin Brown on with us today and Darius Wilson. Nice. How we doing? Love it. I'm excited. You excited? I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. You know I'm always excited about you. So I say this every week, right? I have a million people that are trying to get into and watch this live stream. Mm -hmm. And so we need to give these people enough time to get in and watch us. So we'll just, you know, just carry on for a little bit until everybody gets in. So folks that are uh, that have just uh, joined us, um, please. This one's this one's really cool. As everybody knows, I do mortgages like so our company, <clears throat> we, we find a, affordable home loan solutions for families. And so oftentimes people ask me, Justin and Darius, like, why aren't you on there talking about interest rates and products and services and such? And so, you know, folks know where to find me. I mean, I'm here. I can answer those questions. And that's a given. Right. But I have um, a network that, you know, that we've built over years of being on these platforms and just being in, uh, in business and such. And so it would be uh, a shame that I wouldn't be able to share these people with the other folks in the network as well. You know, I have clients. And in this case, uh, we're talking about parents right now. So I have clients that have children that play sports and such. And so, um, you know, I've known both of you all. I've known Darius for a long, long time. Uh, Justin got to know you last year and, uh, you know, I think the world of you too as well. And so I thought this would be a good opportunity for, uh, for us to get together. Um, folks that are uh, joining us and that are listening, uh, Ahmad Dorsett, he's a uh, head assistant basketball coach for North Carolina A&T. He will be joining us. So once I see him, I'll let him pop in here. Um, but, uh, um, you know, we have some time. I usually try to keep this to about 30 minutes today. We'll probably go 40 maybe, but, uh, but Justin, tell us uh, tell us who you are and uh, and what you do. Absolutely. So, uh, so my name is Justin Brown. Um, I'm out of Wilmington, Delaware, originally. Um, you know, excelled at athletics. You know, at a young age, and I was fortunate enough to be able to play um, at Penn State University and the University of Oklahoma. Um, I was even then more fortunate enough and blessed to be able to play for the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills. Um, but as going through, you know, my process and developing, you know, being an athlete, just like athletes that look like me, um, you know, we we tend to uh, fall into that identity, right, of being an athlete and that's it. So unfortunately, I fell into that trap, right? I fell into that trap early and I committed my entire uh, being to playing to be a professional athlete. So when I got to that level, um, I didn't necessarily have too many hobbies. I didn't have too many different things outside of the game. And going into my second year, I was training with one of the, you know, one of the best wide receivers to my book to this day, Antonio Brown. And he challenged me after a workout session. He just said, so, JB, who are you? And I told him I was a football player to where he caught me. And he said, don't he said, don't let this game do that to you. He said, you know, you're more than an athlete. Don't let this, you know, don't let the league do this to you. So I shrug it off. I didn't pay it too much attention. And then, you know, going into after that season, you know, did fairly well. Um, I ended up getting released and getting picked up by the Bills, to which then uh, I. Um, suffered a, my first season ended injury, um, broke my foot. Then I broke my, I mean, I tore my quad um, after rehabbing my foot and being able to play that, you know, I, I tore my quad. So my second season ending injury. Um, and then after rehabbing that and getting that up to, um, you know, full strength, I then tore my psoas all on the same side of my body. So three season ending injuries in a row. Now that question and now that conversation with, Anto with AB is now fresh in my mind, right? As I'm on the couch and now I can barely walk up and down the stairs and depression, anxiety, the whole nine is going, I'm going through. So I was challenged by a local, uh, a local business owner, a very successful business owner to pretty much use the same process that I used to get to the NFL um, and just kind of reinvent, reinvent it, right? And uh, you know, use it to and whatever it is that I did in the second quarter of my life. So what I do now is I, um, you know, I, I provide different services for student athletes and coaches um, as far as um, keynote speaking. And the, my main message is to uh, help student athletes, um, leaders of student athletes, coaches to really dive into themselves and understand who they are so that um, they can be able to understand not only necessarily how to contribute to their team and that organization um, with their natural strengths and talents, but uh, most importantly, allow them to understand how they're going to be able to transition and what talents and strengths they're going to be able to lean on to transition throughout life, right? Because we all know that sports ends, sports will end at some point, um, or sports will go on pause, right? Like as it is now. And you have to understand, you know, who are you to your core, which is going to allow you to excel, allow you to make, to impact, allow you to um, continue to be productive as a, as a human being right outside of your sport. So that's what pretty much, um, you know, my mission is, like I said, I do this through 
uh, speaking engagements and also with um, some training um, that I do and a tool that I use to help, you know, bring together, um, you know, the culture and team building. My bad. I guess I should learn how to use the uh, the equipment. So, <laughs> yeah. So, so I was trying to mute us while he spoke. But uh, yeah, Justin, uh, we're going to get to a lot of that stuff that you talked about. And uh, I took some notes there. So uh, thanks for that introduction. So Darius Wilson, uh, uh, who are you and what do you do? Justin, that was fantastic. I'm looking forward to hearing more about that as well. Um, my name is Darius Wilson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of the Higher Level Basketball Club. Um, it's, um, you know, we, we're using the game of basketball to positively impact our community in as many ways as possible. Uh, the program itself is, is multifaceted where, you know, like most we're offering basketball skills training, mentorship, leadership training, as well as a travel basketball element. Uh, we also have a semi-pro team that is connected to our program that has a number of college athletes as well as professional athletes that play every single summer and we're also doing a number of events uh, from what we like to call candid conversations that allows you know business owners in our area to talk to the kids now you know via zoom but oftentimes face to face um justin very similar to what you say you know just trying to get the kids to understand that they're more than just athletes um so we've been running this program for we started a program in 2009. So now we're, we're coming up on 11, almost 12 years of doing a program. Um, we've seen a number of kids, you know, come through the program, you know, some earning scholarships to play at the next level, encouraging some to now, you know, they're now business owners and, you know, just using the game. What we say is we're using the game of basketball to bridge the gap between generations. Um, it allows us to make that positive impact on them um, in their day-to-day -day lives as they move forward. And um, it's been an incredible thing incredible thing awesome awesome so darius i'm gonna stay with you so both of you all i mean this is the the pandemic COVID season mm -hmm. right and this is uh part of the reason i'd, I'd always had a a dream about setting up some sort of a uh a, a, a network or a podcast type of you know scenario some some interview style and uh just when the uh pandemic uh started we uh um, I just just went all in on this and I started to interview people that were in our network. So, Darius, when when the uh, COVID got announced and people were sheltered in place and things started to change, uh, what was your what was like your first reaction? Uh, so I, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm an optimistic person. Actually, let me change optimistic. I'm a faith. I have a, a lot of faith. Um, so the first person I thought about was Alan Johnson. And what Alan Johnson always said was, you know, when things seem like they're getting tough, you're, there's a breakthrough that's ahead. So then I also thought about vacation time because <laughs> as an entrepreneur, you know, you're, you're constantly you're constantly on the clock. So it was vacation. And then it was also this could get really bad. But there's a silver there's a silver lining here. And um, we're going to have to get ahead of this thing and, you know, just try to do our best to to be there for the kids and be there for the families. First thought, that was it. Got it. How about you, Justin? What was your thought? Um, Like I said, more so what Darius was saying, you know, we have a lot more time, but one of the things that, and I, and, you know, we have already, already connected in this community, Sean, um, you know, we're hearing ET, we're hearing ET um, or even just other people, other encouragers, other influencers saying, you know, never let a great, um, never let a good crisis go to waste, right? So never let something that um, can be looked at or viewed at as something that could be bad, right? A crash, a crisis, a pandemic, right? Don't let that go to waste. So trying to find that silver lining, like was already mentioned, um, you know, where can I grow, right? What areas have, you know, might I be able to work on or help, whether it's growing your business, whether it's personally, um, you know, learning something new, a new skill, um, you know, just, just trying to figure out areas to grow within all this time, because, you know, there's two ways I feel like people can go. You can go the panic route. You can either go you know, to watch all the news and, and get caught up with a lot of things you can't control. You can go to that route, which is a little bit more internal and starting to think about, you know, how can I become better as a person? You know, how can I become better as a coach, you know, as a, as a human being? Um, so just being able to take it and you know, take advantage of those opportunities every day during this time. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, welcome, uh, Coach Dorsett, Ahmad Dorsett. Thanks for having me, fellas. Appreciate it. Sorry I'm late. No, that's no worries. You, you told us that you would be late. You are uh, doing a basketball workout with your team, right? 
actually, actually, our guys uh, finished earlier um, with summer school, so I just was on a, a Zoom with about 50 other coaches talking about championship DNA. Mm. Oh, wow. All so, right, so real quick, tell us who you are, what you do, and then um, the question I just posed was, uh, you know, COVID, pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. What yeah. um what were your thoughts behind that when it started? Like uh you know what were you thinking? So first, just tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Ahmad Dorsett, and I'm an assistant men's basketball coach here at North Carolina A and T. What I do is try to lead and, and, and mold young men to become successful, um, and using the tool of basketball to 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 get them to wherever they need to go after college. And um, then uh, tell us about COVID. Well, you know when it hit, you know it 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 shocked the world. It, it shocked the world, man. You know, uh, our head coach, uh, Will Jones, you know, he sat down with our guys and told our guys, hey, man, listen, basketball stopped. It stopped. You know, so that, that, that that's a life check in, in itself. You know, got guys, all, all student athletes need to be hungry. They need to be hungry other than the sport that they're in so they can be successful when their sport stops again, if it does, because we, we don't know. And I, I think that hit home to a lot of people, especially these young men. Like, man, I, I got to maybe look at my path a bit differently. You know, I had a vision and the vision that I had starting off was being an NBA or uh, become a, a pro overseas, not thinking maybe I want to open up my own business. They say that walking in the door, I want to be an entrepreneur and, and do this and that. But we all know you're on scholarship. You want to play basketball and become a pro. We, we know that. But when it stopped in March, <laughs> there's no, there was no more air in the basketball. There was no more air in the football. The, there was nothing. No bats, no tennis balls. No, everything stopped. You're watching reruns. Good thing <laughs> Michael Jordan's thing came on because we'd have been going crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that reminds me. It's not about me. It's about you guys. But uh, I'm going to try to wrap this up really quick in a story. But I remember um, last year, Ahmad, you called me. And you like, man, can you get this dude? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, he's like, Sean, we got we got a whole uh uh what was it, a, a career fair going on in the gym. Yep. And he's like, there's there's employers from all over the country, all over the world, and my guys are in the locker room playing video games. Mm-hmm. And and he was like, yeah, they're probably going to have a career, you know, after basketball, after college. But like, how difficult would it be for them to go back and put a suit on and just go to the career fair? So he handed me the phone <laughs> and he put me on the spot, really. And I talked to the young man and I was just like, you know, just asking him, like, you know, what what are your plans? Like, what are you thinking about? Like, what happens? Like we just talked about when that ball, the air is out of the ball and the ball stops bouncing. Right. What right. what happens if you don't get that look that you're really looking for after college? And then it doesn't hurt the fact that North Carolina A&T is one of the you know best educational schools in the country. Right. Um, right. You have this great education and people are seeking after talent like yourself. You played sports. So that gives you a leg up, too, as well, because people know you're competitive and and, you know, you can go through adversity and such. Why not, bro? Just go down, go get, you know, your suit. And then just go mingle with the people, you know, go find out what it is you're looking for. Maybe it's not for you and you don't think it is. But we talk about here, build relationships before you need them. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this call right now um, has those relationships that you will end up connecting with in the future. And that's Mm -hmm. the whole situation. That's the whole thing is the guy that you had me talk to, Ahmad, like right now, he he was a senior, right? He was a senior. He was a senior from Ohio, uh, Camden Taylor. And, you know, I, you hit home and it was perfect. It was perfect timing. And and he did exactly what you said. And here's the beauty of it. With, with and he that, texted me to tell me that, too. He, yeah. he knew I was on him. <laughs> In communication with him. And, and, you know, that's the beauty of, again, networking and, and relationships. I was able to get a hold of you right then and there and put you on a spot with a, a student athlete, uh, a potential future coach. And he's getting a different perspective other than the coaches he sees every day. And I don't know if he told you this, but now he's coming back to school for his master's and he's oh, going to be a graduate assistant for us. So, you know, that's, 
he, he's hungry for that. But I, I think that that conversation you had clicked. And another thing that, you know, Coach Jones has taken over, he's implementing that we have three career fairs throughout the year. And, I mean, they're humongous. It, it covers the entire gym, top, bottom, and some in the um, the PE building. So every guy's suit and tie, you got to go. Nice, you gotta, nice. You know, and, it's, and, and it, I know we haven't talked about this. Uh, maybe you guys have, but, like, when it's time to vote, we're, we're transporting our team to the booth. That's good. Wow, you know? that's good. So, you know, that, that's the things that Coach Jones has been putting in play, man. And, you know, we're, we're excited about the future. And I, th- I think COVID is going to have some changes, but, the, you know, everybody's working together to try to make it a smooth transition. That, that's awesome. And, Darius, you know how I roll. I say, look, man, go to your dorm, put your suit on, go back to the career fair, and I need you to take a picture when you get there. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and text me the picture. <laughs> yeah. Good. Yeah. So, 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 Justin, just, so, um, uh, Ahmad, I have introduced all of you guys through text and everything, but you know, Justin's a, a ex, you know, former NFL player. Um, he's got a great program right now that he's doing uh, for student athletes to, to learn to, you know, find themselves outside of, uh, outside of sports and that, mm-hmm. that particular idea, identity that comes with being a, an athlete. So mm-hmm. Justin, can you tell us about the one thing that you did to kind of help uh, the student athletes uh, a bit more um, with that, I know you have uh, uh, an analysis, uh, an assessment that you've been doing. Can you tell us about that as well? Absolutely. So, yeah, so the assessment the, it's a disc assessment, right? And it's been around for hundreds of years, invented by a man named William Marston. But I think the, the most powerful thing about the tool is that, you know, it breaks down. There's a lot of different personality assessments, right? The Myers Briggs, you know, they're 31 different personalities. This assessment really breaks it down into four. But not only does it tell you, you know, what your strengths are, but it also tells you how you adapt. Right. And as coaches, you know, leaders, we, we all know about, you know, your how you are when things are natural. Right. Practice. Right. Versus the game. Right. Different environments are different. So not only did this, does this tool tell you, you know, how you are in your strengths, but it also tells you where you're limited and then how you are, even when your strengths, how you adapt. Right. So, for instance, for myself, I, we, me and Sean were just kind of just joking a little bit of protocol, both introvert. Right. Naturally introvert process, analyze, probably to the T, I, I overthink, right? So naturally in practice, everything's controlled, everything's fine. I know exactly different periods I'm gonna do. I know the, what, probably what look I'm gonna get on the defense, right? So everything's controlled. Now I get to that game and instead of, you know, practicing and prepare for cover zero, now Michigan State comes out and they're playing swap coverage, cover two, right? So now normally before I started to catch myself, I would always find myself playing slower because what, what I found myself doing in practice, right? What I prepare for, wasn't necessarily, you know, it, it, when I got to the game, now it's different. Now I have to adapt. And me being naturally an introvert, when I would try to bring my slow, you know, process, adaptive mind to that that setting, I was playing slower. I wasn't winning the, my, my one-on-ones, right? So then I had to get to a point to where now it's like, even though I'm introverted for these next two to four hours, I need to be very fast paced. I need to be a lot more reckless. And, and if certain things don't come across, now I need to be able to go and do it the best way I can and then make the adjustment, right? So with this tool, it allows you not only, like I said before, you'll understand your strengths and it takes about 15 minutes to, to go through, but it, it points out your strengths. Most importantly, it tells you, you know, how you are when you adapt. So a lot of with the athletes that I'm dealing with, even coaches of athletes, you know, a lot of them going through COVID right now. I mean, it was it, 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 to, to, to try to wrap their mind around, okay, listen, we have to focus in on, you know, your strengths. So how you're going to handle the challenges through COVID if you're an introvert is you want to get all the information. So reach out to the coach. Coach, what's it, what's everything looking like? Right. What, what, what does, you know, our, um, you know, what does, you know, the time schedule look like? When will we be able to play? OK, coach, what do I need to do to be able to prepare my body? If I'm an extrovert, if I need to be around people, you need to get involved with those group chats. Be the one to start the group chat. Stay engaged with your teammates. Right. Because if you're someone that is naturally extroverted and you like being around people, when, when COVID happened, I don't care what sport you played. That was a shock. No more. No longer can you go out and go to the locker room, right, and chop it up, right. So now that's a different dynamic that you have to adjust to. So when you start to realize that I am a people, per, I am people oriented, right, I am extroverted, and now that was taken away from me. How do I still continue to be my best self during this time of transition, during this time of uh, where I have to adapt? How can I still stay true to myself, right, to be able to, to provide that juice for my teammates, to be able to provide that juice for myself as I go through this time? So. What I've been, you know, the, 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 like like me and Sean were just talking about, the timing um, of this situation and circumstance, you know, I, it, obviously there's a lot of different, um, there's a lot of negatives that have come from it, you know, with lives being lost and a lot of different things going on socially. But 
you know, as far as with this tool and helping, I think it's just a tool to be able to help right now, you know, because a lot of people are trying to figure out some stability. A lot of people are, are finding out that now you might not be able to go to work, you know, or you might not be able to go to practice. You might not be able to do certain, do certain things. Who am I without that? Right. You're just saying, coach. So I think that the, with this tool is allowing athletes to and coaches of athletes to understand who they are away from their job. So that, like you said, if this time does happen again, I know exactly how I can, can prepare. I can know exactly who I need to be in contact with, how I need to get information, what is too much information, right? Just being more so aware of your behavior and understanding if my behavior is allowing me to overcome this challenge or is it working against me? So I think that this tool, that's what allows it to do with, to help service against student athletes and coaches. Man, I love you dudes, man. So <laughs> Darius, so you done a good job at like what, what JB, what Justin was talking about of pulling your core guys together, your group of, um, I shouldn't even say guys because you you are you train female and male athletes um, as well. So tell tell us about like what you've been able to do. I call it a lab. You call it the Mamba Hours. Um, okay. Also okay. with within that, Darius. Um, so I want you to talk about the facility. I want you to talk about what you've done to pull the you know the, the your folks together. But also I'm interested um, to hear about the parents as well because um, unfortunately social media. Um, I have it and, and I get distracted by it and my son picks my phone up and he really wants me to drive an hour in the morning at four in the morning to put him in your lab. And I don't know how comfortable I am with that. So like, like, like t- tell us about that. Um, so uh, to, to touch on just keeping the parents and the, um, and the kids together, uh, like you said, you know, some parents are not comfortable, you know, being in a, in a group format right now. So, you know, I, I was curious as to what Zoom stock was doing during this time. I, you know, I didn't really, you know, catch any changes, but the Zoom calls are a big thing. Uh, we've been able to pull the parents in as a group. We'd have anywhere from 40 to 100 players and parents all in one Zoom call where we would have, you know, current college players or current college coaches at Division three and Division two levels and just guest speakers to come in and just kind of talk about the things that people were becoming more concerned about, especially in our arena, which is sport. Um, you know, like Coach Amad being at Division One level and Coach Justin Plan, uh, you know, it's like that recruiting piece right now. It's a big unknown. So the conversations that these people have had during the Zoom calls has been one of the easiest ways for us to pull people in as a unit without them actually being face to face. In reference to the training piece, I was doing Zoom training as well, doing it, you know, via Zoom call, which is fun. Uh, I didn't realize how much work that would be, but for 45 minutes, I was in front of that camera doing those ball handling drills that I could just normally stand back and just kind of watch and critique, but now I'm out there sweating, so they're laughing at me, but that was a great thing because, you know, you know how it is when, when someone sees the leader um, of their group in the trenches with them, they work a little bit harder, so that was fun doing the Zoom calls. Um, then I, I, I was looking at different facilities because, um, like you said, ET says, don't let a good crisis go to waste. So the the, you know, the gyms I was using, Woodbridge High School, every public facility closed that I did basketball training. So I started looking around at these different buildings. Now I'm seeing office space for lease everywhere. So now I started looking at commercial real estate and you know, it's, it cost me to get started, but there was a, a, a small location that um, I've been trying to partner with me for years. So I said, you know, let me call them, try to get some background on commercial real estate. They just pretty much pulled me in and it just started with myself and, and one pro guy, Brian Allen, who you guys know, uh, we started going, they were saying, you know, any other kids that want to come, just let me know. So I just simply just kind of gauged the people that were comfortable being in a group setting. And I just kept those groups fairly intimate. So right now we have a 4.30 a.m. group, a 6 a.m., a 7.30 a.m. group, and a 9 a.m. group. And there are 10 to 12 kids, mainly pros and college guys, because they're 18 to 34. They can sign their own consent. Um, those groups stay the same. Like we don't really add anyone else to it. So it's been the same 48 guys and girls um, over the last six weeks. And it's been rocking and rolling. Yeah, it, it, it looks good. It looks really good. What have y'all been focused on in the uh in that lab? It looks like there's there, like like you can't even get in if you want it. Like you have a, a bubble <laughs> around it and you know the door is locked and like it's, it look, it looks so great. Like what what have y'all been focused on there? I mean, the primary focus uh, is always just understanding, you know, what it is that you're trying to accomplish on the basketball court. 
learn the game within the game. You know, basketball skills training is such a big thing now, uh, but the kids must continue to learn the sport. You know, like that's the biggest thing here. If you learn sport, like Justin, like you said, you know, being able to adapt when something changes, you know, right in battle. And so we just create as many situations as possible to make the kids comfortable being uncomfortable um, to try to help prolong those professional guys and their careers and the college kids so they can have more fun and not get sucked up coaching them on, not get caught in that transfer pandemic, you know, because they're upset. The thing is, if you know what you're doing when you're on a basketball court, you know what you're trying to accomplish, you never get, you know, thrown off track. So that's the biggest thing for hours on end. Those guys come in, they get and girls, they come in and get skill work, game breakdown, they get a lift. And most of them will go get Chick-fil-A or go eat some food and they come back and play pickup. So mm. typically we're going from 4.30 a.m. and we're done by 11.30 a.m. So we're out of there by noon. And I get to enjoy the rest of my day and talk to you guys. You know, <laughs> so, you know some, some true professionals. So it's been, it's been a blessing in disguise. You know, no one has had any, you know, sickness. Nothing's been spread. You know, all the kids that have gotten tested, you know, they've been negative. So we're just keeping it intimate. And it's, it's, it's been a blessing, man. It's been That's a blessing. That's awesome. Good, good work. Good work. <clears throat> Coach Dorsett, Ahmad Dorsett. Um, yes, talk, talk to us if, if you can about, mm -hmm. uh, recruiting, like how's, how's it going with recruiting? Um, you know, right now with, with folks not being able to visit campuses and stuff. Um, I know, uh, again, and I, I'm speaking for parents as well, because, uh, as I mentioned before you got on the line, Ahmad, you know, I do mortgages and, uh, my clients are are parents of athletes and such, and so I know there's 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 people that are thinking about this um, when they're going through this process. But like, how how is that number one for the the student athletes, the recruiting process going? But like, what are some of the questions and uh, that you're hearing from parents, and what advice are you giving to parents as well? Well, I think the the, the toughest the tough thing is your your kids that are going to be seniors right now, your 2021s because they didn't have the opportunity to play on the circuit this past summer. You know, even though they're having tournaments in July and they're streaming them, it's not the same as college coaches being in the gym physically watching them play, you know. And when you're watching the stream, the stream is not as clear and you can't see uniform numbers and, you know, some sites aren't really good. So um, that that has been difficult and it's unfortunate points ones have to go through that. Uh, and I know some parents and, and kids are, are concerned and worried, like, uh, man, should I commit to the, the first school that offers because coaches can't come out or we may not be able to go visit campus or should I wait and see if the NCAA is going to let the coaches come out in September or, or October? Like, no one knows. You know, no one knows. But for right now, we're operating as college coaches are not coming out. So we're we're doing our homework we're doing our due diligence of reaching out to college coaches AU coaches we're recruiting the guys that are on our list and we're researching in certain areas and positions that we may need down the line with 22s and 23s you know so we're, we're continuing to do that and we're talking to parents and we're setting up zoom meetings so we're having official zoom meetings so we're trying to present everything to our prospect and his parents what they would see if they come on campus for a visit so we we were probably on for a good two hours and wow. it's, it's long yeah it's long but when you come on an official visit you're talking you know 48 hours so we're trying to squeeze 48 hours into two on a computer screen you know what i'm saying so mm. it, it it has its challenges um but also it's, it's been somewhat of a blessing too because we we have been able to get some some good recruits on our radar that we probably that we probably wouldn't get if these kids were playing live right now. You know, we 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 got we got two really really good commits early, um, and they're they're probably, I mean, they're top ten in their area. You know, so had they played in July, it'd have been more of a battle. You know, mm -hmm. they might not have committed this early. Not saying we wouldn't have gotten them, but it might have been the late signing period if they had a successful July. Mm -hmm. You know, so but um my my, my advice to, to these parents right now, uh do your research, do your research, speak with your coaches, uh AU and 
uh, your high school coach and understand that we have to prepare that we may not be able to visit campuses officially. We have to prepare that college coaches may not be able to come to open gyms or catch a game or two uh, when the season starts. Because when the season starts, we're, we're, we're playing. So it makes it, hard, it makes it harder for us to go out and see prospects because at the same time, even though we're still recruiting, we still got to go see our guys that are already committed to us too and show them support. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's my biggest thing for them. Just, just do your homework, do your research. And if, if you know it's a fit, don't gamble with it. If you know it's a fit, don't gamble with it. You know, right, right now you got schools that have two scholarships and they're recruiting 15 people for those scholarships. If you're, if you're player number two and that, and you know, that's a fit or it's close to home. You don't want to go close. You don't want to go far away. Take it. If they're recruiting you, they, they're needing you and they're wanting you put some energy into the research. And if you feel like that's a, that's a place where you can be successful, they're going to take care of you. Then don't wait. Don't gamble with it. If you're a one and done type person, you're going to and you you know out of high school if you're a pro or not. You know if you're a pro. If you don't know, then you got to have a sit down and you got to come to reality very fast. You got you, that, that's that's the biggest thing. Everybody wants to be a pro. Everybody wants to be in the NBA. Man, reality. You, these guys these guys have to have someone to actually talk some sense into them and understand. Hey, listen, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be a pro, but there's there's a series of pros there's various levels of pros you know so just which pro are you Let's and once go. they figure that out once they figure that out then i, I think situations and answers become become easier right you uh you threw me a softball that's kind of like the way home ownership is going right now so mm-hmm. so there's far more people that want to buy houses than their homes that are available right now mm-hmm. right so you talk about this whole competition piece and there's players that, you know, you, you, you don't, you didn't have as much competition with because they're not getting the exposure, right. That they mm-hmm. would normally get home ownership's kind of the same way now, because there's some people that don't feel comfortable going out and seeing houses, you know, mm-hmm. um, they're, they're, they're just some people that have lost, unfortunately lost their jobs and such. And so they're not in a position. So even though uh, competition is very high right now, it's less competition than what it would have been if we were in a normal market. Mm-hmm. And so it's, 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 it's pretty similar. So, man, we could talk all day, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do a couple things and wrap up. So as you know, I, you know, I talk about relationships, uh, DNA, you know, why you do what you do, who you would let down if you fail um, or didn't succeed. Um, and then, you know, a plan, like having a plan is super important. How are you going to get to, you know, to the your target? And so we've touched on all of that today. So what I want to do is uh, I want to start. We're going to start with Darius. Um, uh, tell us a couple things. Number one, tell us how we can find you and connect with you. Um, let us know what you need. Right. And then lastly, dead or alive. Um, who would you like to, you know, have a cup of coffee with a breakfast, lunch, dinner, or just a conversation? So uh, like I said, number one, how can we connect with you? Um, what do you need? And then tell us about that conversation. Gotcha. I'll say uh, you can. You guys can find me on my website. It's uh, hlskillsacademy.com. Uh, it's the website, hlskillsacademy.com. I'm also on Instagram at Higher Level Sports, uh, Facebook, Higher Level Sports, Twitter, Higher Level Sports as well. So, Everything is pretty much higher level sports, higher level skills academy, easy way to get in contact with me. Let's see, things that I need. I need to continue to continue to build my network, like continue to build my network. Just in this this 30 minute conversation with you guys, I picked up so many different nuggets and learned so much. And like you said, Sean, we could go for hours. So I'd say I need to just continue to, to strengthen my network and, and then actually use that network you know, to, to, uh, to help people that are around me. And if I could have a conversation with someone, 
I would have to say, you know, our theme has been Mamba Hours based on a story I heard about Kobe Bryant. So uh, if I could have a conversation with Kobe Bryant, I would, yeah, I would take that all day long. Got it. Got it. No, that's awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, and so, yeah, you guys go, please follow uh, Higher Level Sports, Darius. Um, he's he's the best. Um, he's definitely the best, and he pours into those kids. And so, you know, gives more value than he collects in pay. I promise you that. Um, JB, Mr. Justin, uh, uh, former professional uh, football player, and uh, diving into uh, the kids to, uh, you know, help them understand who they are. Like, so how can we connect with you? Um, what do you need, sir? And then, you know, dead or alive, who would be that person that you, you know, you'd want to connect with? Um, so first you can find me on my website, uh, justinbrownvs.com. Um, justinbrownvs.com again on LinkedIn um, and Facebook. You could just type in Justin Brown. And then as far as my Instagram um, and, and Twitter is Justin Brown VS. So Justin, excuse me, Justin Brown underscore VS. Um, and, and that's pretty much where you can find me as far as what I need. And I don't mean to piggyback off of Darius, but I think, you know, being the, the fact that, you know, I've, I've been in, in, in athletics um, and being um, in, in, in football, I think just, and like I said, I've been able to gain a lot of nuggets and even be able to see a lot of different, you know, similarities, you know, from different sports, um, you know, so I think just being able to can come around like minds, um, coaches, people that are athletes, but are in different sports to be able to pull from, um, even when it goes into the recruiting process, you know, I was really in tune. Okay, what's the recruiting process for, for basketball, right? Like, like, and even talking about the different things Darius was saying, like 4.30 in the morning, like that just gave me some fuel to go tell my guys that are training at five, six o'clock, well, you need to get up a little bit earlier, like, because <laughs> if you're get into it, you know, in different parts of the, of the country, you know, that a lot earlier. So I, just, I think just continuing to be open uh, to different aspects of different ways to help, you know, the, the next generation get, uh, to the higher levels and, and being able to pull from great like minds that are on this call. Um, and then as far as um, if someone that I would want to meet I, and me being, you know, pivoting away from the game, I, I've really become a, um, been diving into that introvert. Like we were talking about earlier, Sean, and, and being a reader and um, wisdom, right? Wisdom, discernment. Um, I think, you know, picking back off of someone that, you know, I always go to, you know, I read Proverbs every day. So I think if somebody I can meet, um, it would definitely be Solomon. You know, just some of the wisest man, um, you know, most wealth, the wealthiest man. He had everything, right? But one of the yeah. things that he continued to drop was was nuggets, wisdom. You know, talking about the good things of having money, the the challenges, right? The good things of fame, the challenges. So if I can meet somebody, it would definitely be be Solomon to have that conversation. Uh, thank you, thank That's you, tough. thank you, sir. And uh, last but not least, Ahmad Dorset. Um, uh, Geez, what were, what were my questions? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just joking. How, uh, how can we find you, right? What do you need? And uh, dead or alive, who would be that? Uh, com what would be that conversation, or who would it would it be with? Well, um, I could be found at uh, ncat.edu on the athletics website. Uh, my email is on there. Um, Twitter is at coach Dorset, and I'm on LinkedIn as as uh, coach my Dorset as well. Um, what I need, I think, I think I've been trying to gravitate towards that um, throughout this this pandemic. Um, I think what I need is, is for us as African Americans to keep getting around each other and learning from one another and keep building each other up um, and, and just showing as much support as we can for each other. Because I think if, if we can pour a lot of that energy into what we've become. And what we're trying to to do further on, it's it's not gonna do anything but help the younger generation. So I think if we continue to do that. I, I think you know we'll be in a, in a in a great place in ten to twenty years for our younger generation, our kids, and our kids' kids. Um, who would I like to sit down with? You know, I would I would probably have to say Sean Carter. Um, you guys probably call him Jay Z. I call him Sean. We're, we're on first name basis. It's because I listen to him so much. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I, I I would like to sit down with him and just talk to him about how when did he see his vision? How did he start it? You know what I'm saying? And, and he had he had different chapters of it, and what made him branch off into different chapters at such an early age? And did he did he see the outcome that he's at right now? when he first started or, or was there a different path he had to take once he realized, okay, you know what, 
maybe this ain't gonna work. I need to try this out. So I would like to pick his brain about stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's it, man. But one of, one other thing though, I, I wanted to say something earlier. Um, I, I think I think the stuff you're doing, Darius, is is really tremendous. I don't know if you guys know, but I speak to Darius often, especially late at night. I mean, we have we're on the phone one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, talking about basketball, um, you know, drills and and you know just ideas of how to teach this and you know what do you think about that? And I think that the biggest as a coach, we get to see a lot of kids work out. I think the biggest thing that that you do differently that you bring, you you got to continue to do it and, and inspire these young kids is that you you're trying to teach them the game and and work through individual skill development by understanding why you're doing what you're doing by watching film breakdown. You know, I don't know too many workout guys who who's watching synergy like he is. You know, he's 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 watching games of how how people play and he's watching games on how the person he's training plays to help them get better. So yeah, continue to do that, man. You know, I support you, man. And shoot. And then Justin, man, it's great meeting you too as well. So let's, let's, let's link up and see if we can get, get this thing moving a little further. Yeah. That's awesome. I know Justin and Ahmad each other um, a good bit. Um, and obviously Darius and Justin are going to connect as well. Um, you guys stay on the call like, uh, you know, after I end it just for a quick second. Um, but everybody out there that's listening, this has been great. I got like goosebumps, like seriously, literally, this has been a fun one um, to uh, talk about because athletics and sports are near and dear to me. Took me a long ways in, in life. Um, and then, like I mentioned, I keep talking about it, relationships, DNA um, and having a plan. Uh, as I say every single week, everyone out there, stay safe. Um, stay as safe and healthy as possible. Um, uh, it's a shame that I have to preface by saying I don't want to get political, but just put the mask on. You know, they say that it helps, uh, you know, mitigate the uh, the spread of the virus. And uh, and and so just just put your mask on. I know it's not a right and all that good stuff, but just do it to protect, you know, Coach Dorsett, to protect Justin Brown, to protect Darius and to protect me. Um, and if there's anything. <laughs> Anything that I can do for anyone in this network, uh, I'm here for you. So everyone have a great day. Uh, I call this the day after hump day, by the way. And uh, um, we'll be talking soon. And uh, thank you, fellas, for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Appreciate you, Sean.